Hi, I'm Brian Harvey. And I'm Johnny Hot. Together we're House of Freaks. And uh, whenever we're in Covina, we watch Quintessential Covina on Community Channel 33. Unfortunately, we're never in Covina. Never been there. <laughs> Can you slice that? From the town that's the pride of the San Gabriel Valley, it's Quintessential Covina with your hosts Marty Getz and Dave Cluck. Tonight's guest, Randy Wesson from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, who'll talk about the Magellan probe to Venus launched Thursday on the space shuttle. Also, Margaret Wolf with award-deserving Covina newsstand. And rounding out our show will be Jeff Snow with Jeffrey Plummer with a cool interview of House of Freaks. Sorry, no blind dog band tonight. And me, I'm Rob Van Reel, asking you to call us at 967-7353 or 967-SELF. Please call us and let us know you're out there. And now here they are, those two guys who got really fat on their vacation, Dave and Marty! Ho! Oh, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. Very nice thank intro. You. Very thank good you very job. much, Rob. Oh. You're looking well. Thanks. You look great. How's I'm WC? Feeling. W what? What'd you say? <laughs> w E. W E. W C. That's it. Have you no, seen him lately? A friend of mine is. Weekend Walrus. Yeah, he's been around. Yeah. It's been a while since he stopped by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I miss him. We'll book him for next week, maybe. If he. Okay. I'll, I'll call his agent. Yeah, we oh, have okay. to talk about it next week. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Covina. Welcome to <laughs> episode 50 of 50 Quintessential Covina, believe it or not. Hi. Hey, we're back. It's been a month. It's been a, a wild, a wild month. Yeah, more, since more our month. since our April Fool's show, and oh. uh, we have a re very, very, very busy full, show, busy and full and How entertaining. It? It's so busy but, that uh, we'd love to get your calls right now because I gotta say, yeah, we got the phone right here. That's nine six seven seven three five three. three. <laughs> yeah, we're coming through, Dave. Uh, our guest is Randy Wesson. Of Jet Propulsion Laboratory or JPL, depending, on, and and of course, of course, <laughs> we have Steve back in the control room. <laughs> so who knows what to up, expect? Up to his old tricks, and uh, but Randy is here, and, he, and he, I guess the main thing we we had him here to talk about the Magellan probe that got launched uh, from the space shuttle a couple of days ago, but of course he works on the uh, Voyager project and is uh, currently trying to decide what to do with the Voyager when it gets to. Neptune. Neptune, one of my favorite planets, of course. <laughs> and uh, it's good to next know. to Pluto. It's good to know. But Pluto's not really a planet. It's basically floating ice. Well, I know. If you talk to Randy, that's what he'd say. Yeah. But he's got two eyes in his name. Um, Randy knows us now, he says, and so he can, he can joke around just like he's one of the boys. <laughs> but we know better. Um, it's going to so be nice to catch up with that hot and wet citizen. Huh? <laughs> 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 Oh, Rob, that, that was a <coughs> Hun Master is back amongst us. Mm -hmm. oh. So we, uh, we, we, got, we got like a month, a month's, month's, a month's worth of news stories. Oh. Margaret Wolf uh, is, is going to be really busy. And, but, but these are, these are, these are but. really, really good news stories. I mean, a lot happened in Covina during the last month. Well, let's tease the news stories. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know that a lot of people yeah, have been watching. Look at your shoes. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tease the news stories. Um, we're going to be looking at. Uh, you can see that light right there. See? You can. It's yeah. kind of, well, you didn't. You shouldn't Misplaced tell. lamp. <laughs> exactly. Where's the arrow? Boy, that's funny. It's like you're reading my mind, huh? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who, Hi. Who's our first caller tonight? My name is Daniel. How I, you doing, Daniel? Have you called before? You sound familiar. I'm, do, I'm doing pretty fine. Good. 
<laughs> well, you, okay. Hey, Marty, it looks like you gained a couple pounds on your vacation. No. <laughs> no, I no? didn't. No? Nah. No, I'm about the same. Same old big Marty. <laughs> but thanks, thanks for mentioning it. <laughs> I really... Now, you ought to stand a little bit closer to your razor, too. Oh, what do you mean? This thing, you should have seen it. You should have seen it about five days ago. That thing's it was, it was like, looking. It was like ZZ Top. It was here. like, I was. It was like ZZ Top a few days ago. This is, look how close this is. Beautiful close up. Look at that. Your nose. Look at that. There's nothing there. Hey, it's Spike. You like seafood? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Marty. That's, that's bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's nowhere near as bad as I've hey, gotten. So, Daniel, what's on? Hey, Smarties. How far is Pluto away from the Earth? How far? I don't know. Oh, I thought well, it was a joke. Well, we'll oh, save oh, that oh. question for Randy Wesson, and boy, he's he's a guy to ask. It depends. It's a long you know, ways away. It has a, a real long ar ways away. Hey, that looks cool. You like seafood? Uh, Love your mouth, dude. Thanks. Whoa. Thanks, dude. Maybe you should meet Raji, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Raji. I'm sorry, but. We <laughs> <laughs> oh, out. Oh. Um, so, what's on your mind, not mine tonight, Daniel? Not that much. I just wanted to call in. Well, we're glad well, you did. Well, you know, anybody of anybody in Covina, we're the happiest that you called us. You know, of all the people you could have called, this this is certainly the number you you dialed. So thanks. Oh, I think I dialed the wrong number though. I think so too because you got a TV show. So I don't think that. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. No pizzas. Yeah, no. Don't be sorry, Danny. Okay. Just be okay. happy. Yes. I'm mean and I'm black. Thank you, Daniel. That was uh, amazing words of wisdom from that young man. I, th I think we have a future philosopher on our hands. I don't think we have a present philosopher. <laughs> there's future, there's, there's future cameras. President. There's cameras pointing at us, Dave. It's just like we're on TV or something. It's live right across my face. There. So, uh, in terms of uh, news stories, well, geez, there's there's those infamous and sad cat mutilations. Oh God. <coughs> you know. Got to hand it to them. Or turned out to, to be that? turned yeah. out to be not what they thought it was originally. A couple kids um, goofing around. A couple kids. Poor cat, though. No. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, there was the uh, at El Manny's uh, at El Manny's Manny's El Loco. We had a TV show taping over there. Filming. filming they filming. filmed. Quantum. We leak. taped. Dean Stockwell was there. Dean Stockwell was there. In, in Covina, it. of all time. We have the uh, poster contest for the uh, Alcohol, uh, Drug, and Child Abuse uh, Commission. They had a poster contest throughout. They had 1,100 entries, of which there was somebody was a judge. Oh, oh you I know. Don't, I don't somebody see you know was a judge. One of the judges. Thank you. Of what? The poster contest? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Big time, huh? Yeah, Dave, that's a big time. Oh, Dave. Thank you. What a man. Thank you. Is somebody there? Hello? Hello. Who is this? This is Julie Smith. Hi, Hi Julie. Julie Smith. No, last, no last names, Julie <laughs> Smith. Uh, yeah, Smith, that's probably not a real last name. I know. I'm calling about the um, contest that's going to be on. The contest is going to be on. The entries for the drug contest. Right, the we were just as, we were just talking about that actually. Well, that's good. Th that's I have two kids from my classroom who were um, winners. Oh yeah. So I was anxious to watch them. Well, it'll be coming up pretty quick. We'll be going to news about at about ten fifteen or ten twenty, and it'll be right right in there. That sounds good. I'm yeah. proud of them. I'm glad they're going to be on there. Well, that's what we're here for to. Uh, <laughs> to spotlight those special people here in our town that deserve the attention that <laughs> what was their name now what, what was their names that, that, that won okay i have a third grader carlo <laughs> sbr2 yeah and he won second place great and i had a second grader christy bernal and she won the first place yeah right <laughs> nobody's a loser yeah we have though. some footage of some of the posters mm -hmm. we have Post we, it's a kind of a news stories we've done we're going to probably put together a whole program about the whole Thing, but we're just going to show highlights from the. Highlights. Actually, I really just called to save you. You guys <laughs> look like you needed something to talk about. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, that's something we we, we <laughs> always true. talk well, about. And th we this part of this this part of the show is is dedicated purely to viewer calls. It's the lives, this is your lives time. and dies by viewer calls. And this is oh. your time because we we've in, we've installed a new policy here, where um, w when we have our guest on, you can only call with with questions. The about guest. the subject for the guest. I mean, because we were um, getting guests on and people would call about something completely. Yeah, have you guys seen Elvis lately or something? And <laughs> things like that. And that, you know, that's way out of place. And so our guests are usually sitting here going, "Oh, geez, when are they going to ask?" So we're we're me? basically just killing time till ten thirty, right? No, no, ten fifteen. Oh. Ten, you know, ten fifteen, ten seventeen. Yeah, it's real <laughs> tough to kill that much time, as we've proven. 
time and time again. If it was as expensive as this airtime is, you think we wouldn't want to kill it necessarily. How much do you think this production is worth, Dave? Worth I was trying to figure that out. If we were to, yeah, if we were to put a, a, a two-hour, you know, dynamic show that we put on here. You know, I hope that you show uh, more of the Covina High School football games this next year. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's the we're, we're there. The st schedule just keeps getting bigger and bigger every year. We usually do a game a week during football season. Yeah, I've seen I've seen your work. Well, thank you. Do you like it? Uh -huh. Yeah, don't say thank you till she tells us what she thought. No, I just happen to know. I just happen to know one of the coaches personally. Who? Who? Which coach? You can name. You can name your name. Go ahead. Coach Mark Pascarella. Oh, I know. Yeah, I remember oh, Mark. That's kind of <laughs> He's now the head coach at Covina, right? Yeah. He was an assistant coach at Northview under Brian see. Beveridge. W would you like to talk to him? Is he there? Yeah, he's right here. <laughs> Sure. Would you like a for an informal interview? Sure. Yeah. He Sweet. made sure that I insisted I, I mentioned his name on the air. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I guess he's being shy. Maybe, being maybe shy. we could put it up on the screen, Andrew. <coughs> <laughs> you need a proper spelling, though. Yeah. That, was, that was a pretty good one. P-A-S-C-A-R-E-L-L-A, right? No. Close. Close. P-A-C-A-R-E-L-L-A. -A we have a blunder tonight, by the way. Let's see. We have a blender on the set. Yeah, really mixed up, yeah. oh, Julie, if well, you have anything you'd like to donate, donate to our to set. Donut. Donut. Yeah. Any donuts to donate to our set? No, we're, we're looking for props and that kind of stuff to our set, and we'd 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 uh, it's very much love to have you. Uh, is that, is that spelled? No, no, it's Q U A. Oh, Pasquarella. P A S Q U A. I don't think we need any donuts. That'll mess up the whole work. <laughs> Quiet, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, now. Uh, is is there going to be like a heated uh, rivalry now between uh, Mark and Brian Beveridge? No, not at all. Mark and they're going to love each other. Mark yeah. and Brian, yeah, it was Brian's birthday. Do you ever listen to Mark and Brian? They are the original Mark and Brian. That's true. They are the. There's oh, there's a space shuttle. <laughs> you know, I had a dream last night. I, have to, I, didn't, I don't know if I told Randy, but I had this dream last night. I told a couple people here. I was, I was at the Cape, and I was in the room where the launch button was for the space shuttle, and I was all alone, and I pressed it. <laughs> Exciting, buddy. Uh, yeah, Jeez. I launched the space shuttle last night, so in case you were wondering. You still awake, Julie? Oh, no, I'm still here. Oh, okay, good. I thought maybe that uh, dream sequence. Was, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the dream sequence. The, the Salvador Dali dream sequence, Whoa. right? <laughs> but that was cool. I mean, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you like to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So, Julie, you want some movie passes? Pardon? You want some movie passes just for calling in? Do I want a what? Movie pass. You want some movie theater. passes. You, in oh, other words, sure. you take these, you go to the theater, the they let you in and not even ask any questions about it. Sure. I just got back from seeing Field of Dreams. You guys are talking about I this. saw that last night. <laughs> what do you think? I thought it was a good movie. It was. I thought it was a really cool movie. Yeah. Kevin Costner, a personal friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, I thought it was a really, really good movie. I'd like to see it again. Well, then you use that movie pass and you go see it again. Is it at the Covina? It's not the Covina, is it? Yeah, this is at the Covina Theater downtown. Oh, oh, I Downtown see. Covina. Beautiful mm -hmm. downtown Covina. That's right. So, wait, you get movie passes. You just have to show up here sometime this week and pick them up. You just come by the office and say, I was Julie, I called in and, uh, and uh, embarrassed promise. Mark Pascarella on the show, and I want my movie passes for doing so. Okay, I will. Okay. Well, I'll let you guys get back to work. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> this this, is, this was it. Thank you. Okay, this, this bye, Julie. Bye-bye. Nice see you, Julie. <coughs> Okay, I heard another call come through a second ago. Really? It comes right now. Hello. Hello? Hello. Is this Domino's? Yeah, this is Domino's. Hi, guys. No anchovies. Oh, oh Carrie, what do you Hi, say? Hi, Carrie. Hey, what's up? Well, we are. We're back on the air. What can you say? Well, we missed you. They couldn't, oh, keep, nice. us a, they couldn't keep us away. Well. They tried. So what's new? Nothing much. <laughs> it's pretty much the same. All right, what, what can you say? How about you? How's school? Oh, there. Yeah? Yeah, those two guys that the, the satanic, they go to our, my school. You uh -huh. knew them? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Are they, what, what kind of trouble did they get into? Nothing really, I guess. Uh, figures. That's, that's the American justice system for yeah. you. Yeah. What about the Humane Society? Didn't they get on? I would think so. Get in his face? I don't know. I want to ask Margaret Wolf about that. Mm -hmm. So, no, anything else? Um, I just got back from the Depeche Mode 101 movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Is that cool? You should go see it. Ah, uh, it's not my kind of movie. Oh, okay. 
Um, I'm, I, an, I'm an older guy. Yeah, Pink Floyd, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, be yeah man. <laughs> be Grateful Dead. Movie, you know? Pink Floyd. How about the Grateful Dead? No, I'm not a I'm not a deadhead at all. I mean, I you oh. know I listen to the two songs that they play on most radio stations. Trucking and uh, um, driving my train. Yeah. Hey, um, my dad saw Steve and some other people at the airfield taping the model airplanes a couple weeks ago. Is that true, Steve? Okay. Oh, what was that for? Another cable company. Oh. <laughs> Steve, Trader, Trader Rose. We'll, we'll get out there. Simon yeah. agree over we'll here. We'll get out there. All right. Uh, so, well, thank you. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say hi to you guys. We'll call in with questions for Randy later about the Magellan. Oh, okay. Or whatever, other space-related subject. All right. <laughs> and UFOs do not exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <UFOs>. they do. <clears throat> well. I saw Elvis again today. Oh. In a, on a UFO? <laughs> no, yeah, he was, he was on a diet. Elvis was on a UFO today. He was shopping. Shopping. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. All right. Okay, Carrie. Okay. See you at home. All right. Bye. Bye. See you at home. <laughs> Dad. Dad. Yeah. Well, that was fun. Well, I oh oh I got one. Okay, we got like we got like a just a few more a minutes. More calls. Hello. Hi there. Who's this? This is Brenda. Hi, Brenda. How you doing? Okay. What's up? I was just wondering um, what other guests you're going to have this month because well, I was looking at the last month's cable guide and it mentioned some guests you were going to have. Oh, you were looking at the April one, right? Yeah, and I was wondering if any of those guests were going to still be on. Well, if you read the whole thing, you'd know. Did you read the, all the way to the bottom? That or was April. Uh, I said April it was Fools basically joke. BS. It was, it was <laughs> April Fool's page. It was April talking about uh, Harry Dean Stanton. And I, think, I think George Goble was mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of George, Lots of George Goble. Goble. That was classic. That was yeah. Not now, me. actually, well, the rest of this month, we've, we've got next week, we have Xavier Hermosillo on, uh, who's... Uh, now uh, rehired as consultant for the city of Irwindale. A very S controversial show. Spearheading uh, a kind of gener generary. Oh, David yeah, Hermosier. Humbler. Humbler. Yeah. Um, he's going to talk about the Raiders' move to Irwindale. We have Dodie Stevens, a famed 1950s uh, singer. 50s singer. She sang, uh, she wrote and, and sang the song uh, Tan Shoes and Pink Shoe Laces. Of course. Oh, all yeah, she was just at the uh, Cabina Park. <laughs> and uh, after that, uh, we're, we're, not, we're not booked, so uh, if you've got any ideas for it. Um, no, I don't. We're, I think we're working on... Uh, what's going on with Kent Shacknick? I think we're working on Kent Shacknick. We're under negotiations for Kent Shacknick. We're waiting for another earthquake. After, Kent will come <laughs> after Shacknick. But, uh, but that's, that's who's coming up in the next couple of weeks. And that's pretty good for us to actually have two shows. <laughs> Planned ahead, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now all they have to do is show up. That's the other, that's the other part. Hard Randy part. did show up tonight. Randy, We'd like to thank him. And Randy, uh, he was like... Randy worked hard all day, and he showed up. It's going to be like a bouncer at a party tonight. He was, like, he was like hitting up Michelle all the time yes. he was out there. So, uh, but you can't blame him for that. So anyway, anything else? No, that's it. Well, I really appreciate you calling. Would you like some movie passes to the Covina Theater? Sure. Okay. We'll come Good. on down here starting Monday or and on through the week. Um, you can come down, and at the front desk, they'll, uh, they'll have them waiting for you. Okay. So All right. So okay. you got that stew? Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Denise. All right. <laughs> well, thanks for calling, Brenda. Okay, thanks. Okay, we'll see you later. All right. Okay. Well, we're going to go to our break and uh, come back with the uh, the big Camino Newsstand show tonight with, Couple, with uh, Margaret Wolf. A lot of other stories. Let's just real quickly go over the stories that are going to be Oh, let's surprise them. Okay. Let's surprise them. Miracle let's, Mile let's Quarters. Let's keep City Council. Council. Oh, pay attention to the the beginning of the Miracle Mile of Quarters story, but not the end. Not okay. the end. The, the be beginning dwindles. is fabulous. Fabulous. Fabulous beginning. So anyway, okay. Stay um, tuned for Margaret Wolf and Kavina Newsstand with all the news Kavina can stand. And right after that, Randy so Wilson, JPL, be there. See ya. So how do you feel about the space program and the launch yesterday? Well, I think I think overall the the space program is something which which drives all of the technology that we have benefits from and if you're not doing difficult problems if you're not trying to solve difficult problems uh... then you don't learn anything and for the very small amount like one tenth of a percent of the federal budget that we spend on things like planetary exploration the benefits can be seen throughout throughout society all of our communications technologies that we have today uh... xeroxing technologies even um, medical technologies uh, micro miniaturization technologies, all that spun off from the space program because you have very bright people who are trying to do very difficult problems.
Carol. Tom. Some people still don't realize how space technology benefits everyone. Well, you've played a detective. Why don't you give him a clue and I'll be your helper? Okay, partner. Look at this. Without warning, hurricanes can take a huge toll in lives and property. But with space satellites, we now have ample warnings. And thousands of lives have been saved. Hey, Carol, we're a great team. We're a great item. Space technology. This is what's in it for you. Yeah, this job is now a piece of cake, Claire. But then... Yeah, I'll tell you something, partner. I just might stick around a few more years. But Vince... No more dashboard du jour or Vince under glass, huh? But Vince... Look at him! <laughs> Even with airbags, Vince, you still gotta remember to buckle your safety belt. Now you tell me. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Starting a new relationship is pretty scary. It's hard to discuss something personal, but now with the threat of AIDS... First of all, going out with someone does not mean you have to go to bed with them. Take the time to get to know each other. And if the time is right for sex, well, remember, he's worried about it too, so talk about protection. Just be honest. Tell him you don't want to take chances. And sex just isn't cool without condoms for protection. Don't take chances. Help protect yourself against AIDS. And now it's time for Kavina Newsstand with all the news Kavina can stand. Now here's your anchor person, Margaret Wolf. Thank you, Rob. Good evening, Kavina. Leading off the news tonight, a recent case of animal mutilation occurred in Kavina, which generated a lot of publicity. Authorities were wondering if this was connected to the satanic murders in Texas, which were discovered about the same time. After Kavina, authorities apprehended a 16 and 17-year-old. The motive was revealed, and any connection between the Texas murders was dispelled immediately. The teens admitted to the slayings of nearly 15 cats. Authorities noted the two dropped out of a church group after growing discontent with church teachings on Satanism just before the slayings occurred. Police said it appeared the youths were more interested in generating publicity and attention than satanic rituals. Authorities are now debating if the two Northview, sh Northview students should be tried or placed on probation. Now, as Marty had mentioned earlier, a lot has happened in Covina since we last met here. Uh, I have a few stories uh, to bring you up to date on these. First off, volunteerism is alive and well in Covina, and earlier this month, uh, the Covina Police Department honored 16 such people at their seventh annual Volunteers in Police Banquet. On April 13th, the Covina Police Department saluted its Volunteers in Police Service at a banquet at the Masonic Home in Covina. 20, 20, over $20,000 with, with 16 volunteers is incredible. And, and you volunteers are to be commended, and, and you are taking jobs that would cost the city a lot of man hours um, to, to handle, and you're doing some very, some very useful and needed items. We, we sometimes tend to overlook our volunteers and take you for granted, but know that we do appreciate you. We do love you very much and, and, and appreciate you for being a part of us. Each of the volunteers received a certificate of recognition from the Covina Police Department for the hard work they provide uh, to Lieutenant the city. Anderson, would you come forward, please? Elsewhere, four other Covinans were honored by the Chamber of Commerce during April at the Citizen of the Year Award Ceremony. Our city, our Miss Covina, to represent our city in the Miss California. On April 19th, the Covina Chamber of Commerce honored former Covina Mayor Larry Strait at the 29th Annual Covina Citizen of the Year Banquet. And the community is the thing that makes people, the community is the thing that makes awards, the community is the thing that makes things happen. Now, if you live in a community where not much happens, you don't have an opportunity to get awards because there's not an opportunity to do a whole lot. But if you look at Covina, and they mention a few things, they have the Miss Covina pageant, they have the chamber, the very active chamber, they have the Covina concert band, the medical um, fraternity has all of these things like McGann and the hospital, the hospice. You have all of the service clubs that we have in the community, visiting nurses association, the assistance league. You can go on and on and name organizations, name groups, who are doing something for people in the community. And so there's a word that ran across my mind that is probably more important than any of the other things that you might feel and think about, and that's the word opportunity. And if you don't have that opportunity, 
you can't do things. And if you can't do things, you can't get awards. So my hat's off to the people of, of Kavina and the community as a whole because they gave me a wonderful opportunity. Inducted into the Hall of Fame was Dr. Rudolf Brudico, founder of the Lifesavers Foundation. Success story to date. Local business support, the people in this room and elsewhere, was fabulous. And right from the start, seven months ago, small, medium, and large local business, businesses, too many to mention here, recognized the great need for what we were doing and found a way to contribute meaningfully. I'm certainly proud, and I hope all the rest of you are in this room, to work in Covina. It's a good place to do business because there are so many good people doing business here. Also honored with the Golden the Heritage past, Award the were Charles Culver, former city councilman and mayor and for so Covina and a lifelong resident, and Tom yes, Jones, Wayne former administrator with the McGann Clinic here in Covina. Congratulations to those outstanding community leaders. Now, nearly $1,400 was raised during a unique fundraiser at the West Covina Fashion Plaza a few weeks ago. And we have a report by Marty and Dave on this one. Now, notice especially the hard work involved in the editing that Marty did at the beginning of this. Saturday morning, West Covina Fashion Plaza. You stopped by to leisurely shop for a pair of shoes, maybe pick up something for the kids, or just to hang out with the guys. When you stumble upon something that brings new meaning to the phrase, lining up financing. The Kiwanis were having people lay quarters end-to-end -end for a good cause, the Kiwanis Children's Hospital. Covina Assistant City Manager Fran DeLatch explains. Well, the Kiwanis clubs all over Southern California, down in San Diego, have been involved with uh, Miracle Mile and Quarters for the Children's Hospital. It's kind of a kickoff to the Children's Hospital telethon, and uh, it raises funds from individuals for Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. Helping people out is nothing new for this club. Kiwanis officer Tom Driscoll fills us in. This is the fourth or fifth year that Kiwanis International has been involved in this particular telethon. Actually, there will be a telethon on the 3rd and 4th of June, originating from Disneyland, which will be a national telethon raising funds for children's hospitals. Now, this particular telethon is different than any other one because the money raised will stay in the local community to support the hospitals in the particular area. In our case, it will be support of the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. So what all went into putting on this event today? A lot of work. <laughs> we had to organize with uh, the seven different clubs that are all involved in this, make sure that each club would provide us with at least six volunteers that would come and help us uh, do the setup and lay the quarters down on the, on the ground for us. So just to, and bring lots of uh, enthusiasm. And quarters. And quarters, yes. Okay, area students competed in the annual Drug, Alcohol, and Child Abuse Commission poster contest. Earlier this month, the winners were selected, but first we have this. The Covina Alcohol, Drug, and Child Abuse Commission recently honored several area students for their help in getting the message out that drug use is dangerous. This contest that was sponsored throughout the Charter Oak and Covina Valley schools as well as at several private schools in the Covina area was conducted and sponsored by the Covina Alcohol, Drug and Child Abuse Commission. And the commission has been uh, a part of the city family, if you will, since the early 1980s. I was told that in this poster contest that uh, we're observing tonight there were 1,100 entries. And that uh, means 1,100 people were talking about these very real problems that face not only our community, but the entire nation. I'm also very pleased with the support that the police department has given this, John Lentz, and before him, M Michael Day, as well as some of the people that work with him d in law enforcement. Because I think it's healthy for them to develop c contacts, positive contacts in the community, and get uh, a better acquaintance with the fact that there are a lot of people out there that uh, are not antisocial, not negative, but there are positive forces in our community. 
And at the same time, they have access to a lot of information that, that many of us don't. So what we've attempted to do, what they've attempted to do, is to combine their efforts, law enforcement as well as recreation, and then try to get the, the young people at an early age uh, uh, involved in becoming aware of the, the real risk that is involved. With the exception of the grand prize poster, all of the posters will be on display at the Covina Library. The grand prize poster is being reproduced for distribution throughout the city. The winners were in the kindergarten through third grade entry, Christy Bernal, Carlo Esperito, Penny Roman, and Desiree Morales. In the fourth through sixth grade, Brian Borges, Stephanie, or Steph Sadel, Tim Cloyd, Lisley Preciado. The seventh and eighth grade winners were David Guerra, Marissa Scheidel, and Oliva Sosa. And the ninth through twelfth grade winners were Dennis Belmont, Camila Ha, and Chris Overholzer. So congratulations to all those winners. Now, if you happen to drive past Manny's El Loco restaurant on Cyprus in Covina a few weeks ago, you noticed a slight facelift to the restaurant. Well, that's because a new TV series episode was being filmed there, and Dave Cluck brings us this report. For three days in April, a quiet little corner of Covina was transformed into a movie location for the NBC series Quantum Leap. And what a transformation it was. The El Loco restaurant on Cypress Avenue magically became Pinky's Burgerland, circa 1961, complete with old Chevys, waitresses on roller skates, cuffed up blue jeans, and slicked back hair. Quantum Leap portrays the time travels of actor Scott Bakula, whose character winds up visiting Eris through the last 40 years. The show also co-stars Academy Award-nominated actor Dean Stockwell. Both stars declined comment for our cameras, but we did manage to catch up with location manager Veronique Vowell. She told us how Kavina was picked as the location for Quantum Leap. In this particular instance, we were looking for a drive-in, and as drive-ins are really becoming a thing of the past now, we knew about this particular place from other shows and came and looked at it, and the director fell in love with it, and we decided to come out here and shoot for a couple of days. Now, what would be a major obstacle or some of the major obstacles in shooting on location like this? Well, you have to be in places where you can control traffic, pedestrian traffic as well as car traffic. We have control for sound where, especially in this particular instance where it's 1961, we have to be careful that there's nothing around that would look like 1989 so that we can have the look that we want. And on this particular show, it's important because we're constantly traveling through time, so we have to get the right you know, the, the look of the period. Now, how many cast and crew members would there be in, involved in a production of this magnitude? Oh, roughly 60 altogether. Depends on the days. When we have a lot of extras or atmosphere people, we can get up to 120, 150 people. And so as the cast and crew made a quantum leap to their next location, Pinky's Burgers turned back into Manny's El Loco restaurant, and Covina was restored to 1989. Now, more recently, the City Council voted on a controversial subject, and our director, Steve Rhodes, has, uh, was there at the meeting Thursday, and he has this report, too. May 4th meeting of the... Despite strong objections by local residents and business persons, the Covina City Council awarded FTR International of Marina del Rey a construction contract to renovate the City Hall building. The contract is for $2.97 million. Regarding our capability, we are signed with all uh, the unions, uh, uh, the steel unions, the uh, concrete union, the cement company, the labor, all of these unions, even the last and the plaster. Uh, unions. Sometimes we took over our subcontractors' work and we perform as well as they are. In fact, right now we are doing a rebar job for the Hyperion water reclamation plan. We are taking over the job from our subcontractor who, who could not perform. Uh, our organization has around 15 uh, engineers. All of them are a combination between civil, mechanical, electrical. And we do have the capability to do the whole work if we have to. At Thursday's meeting, several persons spoke out against the renovation proposal. Simply, as businessmen, we are concerned about this project as you are, that all of the costs are looked at, and whether it be a beautiful renovation like that or a brand new building. We need to look at the whole package, and that includes the, the impact to the taxes of this town, the impact of parking. All of the costs need to be taken into consideration. 
this subject has been discussed now for several years, and if I recall correctly, about eight to nine months ago, one of the reasons why the new facility was not considered by some of the council had to do with cost. And it was brought up that it would be more cost effective to renovate an existing building. I was involved in a survey that tried to look at it and, and say that when you get done with it and try to renovate it, if you look over at the old Covina Bank building, you'll see what happens. You end up with not exactly what you think you're starting off for. And we projected at the time the costs are going to be considerably more. We now get down to the bottom line and we find out that in fact that is what is occurring. It would be much more cost effective to build a new facility over on Citrus in San Bernardino or any place. When the, the city council in a three to two vote voted to renovate the existing city hall. Council members O'Leary, Coffey and Mayor Bob Lowe did not restate their opinions on the project. However, Councilman Lancaster and Councilman Morgan did restate their opposition to the project. An artist rendering of the renovated City Hall was presented to the council members. The plan calls for the project to be completed by April of 1990. Well, it's that time again. The lottery numbers chosen in Sacramento tonight are 20, 33, 23, 9, 26, 39, and the bonus number is 4. The winnings tonight are $12.5 million. No winners were last, uh, chosen last Wednesday, so the winnings will roll over to tonight, so good luck with that. And finally, the weather. Low clouds tonight, the lows in the mid-60s. Tomorrow morning cloudy, uh, it should be cloudy, but becoming sunny in the afternoon. Highs in Covina should reach in the mid to upper 80s. Another beautiful day in Covina. And that's going to do it for me tonight. Thank you uh, for watching, and also remember, if you have an upcoming event, just give us a call and we'll try to send a crew out there to cover that for you if it's a local event. And uh, have a great week then. Thank you. I'm real interested in the Galileo project and just to find out more things about outer space, I think it's going to help the future, you know, with uh, medicines and, and the such. And that's about all. How about you? Like, I agree with him, you know, I think it's very beneficial. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends have already retired, but I wasn't ready for that. So I'm still teaching, this time in Belize, Central America. I decided to join the Peace Corps. I love my kids. And the way I figure it, I have the rest of my life to play cards. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love mental illness. We fear it. We laugh at it. We scorn it. We think it's shameful. But these are misunderstandings. Misunderstandings that will fade away if we see mental illness for what it really is. A medical disease. A disease that can be treated if you just know where to turn. For an informative booklet, call the American Mental Health Fund. Oh, Miss oh. Margaret. Mar Margaret won't be here next week. We're back. <clears throat> Just informed. I didn't know that. I did, but I forgot. Well, hi, Randy. It's it's Randy Wesson. It's Randy Wesson. How, How you doing? It's me. Good to have ba you back. back for a return visit to quintessential Covina. Good tie this time. I've been working. And okay, and good. what a tie pin. <clears throat> wow, that's amazing. Maybe we can get a shot of that tie pin there. Well, we'll get it at yeah, some point. Be, well, that's the wrong spacecraft. Well, there we go. It's the Galileo, right? Well, it's not the wrong spacecraft. But it's going to be launched as a, well, it's a different spacecraft. It's a different spacecraft. It's a wonderful spacecraft. Oh, God. It, it's big. It, in terms of size, how, how, is, how does uh, Magellan compare to this? I mean, this is for my information. Nobody knows how big okay. the, the Galileo well, is. Well, let's explain to real quick yeah. for what the Galileo was as opposed to the Magellan. Okay, the, the Galileo spacecraft is going to get launched in, there you are, I'm learning. <laughs> uh, October 12th, it's going to get launched, and it's... Uh, it's going to Jupiter, and it's not going the direct way. It's going to go from Earth, Venus, Earth, asteroid belt, Earth, and then out. How long and is this trip? Six years instead of the year and a half what it normally takes to get up there. Six years. Well, we'd be cruising. It's really funny. At the lab, the, the, the technical name for what this mission is is called Delta Vega trajectory. Delta V for the change in velocity, mm -hmm. EE, Earth, Earth, gravity assist. But the lab, we call it 
the solar cruiser. Solar it's just popping around is, the whole system. I mean, it, I mean it, could, it could take a year and a half, but they're, were they saving fuel, years. or what's the deal here? Well, it's no. It's a direct line, isn't it? Well, no, what happened is... There's it, no other planets to ricochet off. You, we didn't do that to go to Jupiter or the Voyager. We just went straight there. The difference is, is that when you have a... When you have a, a throwaway, <laughs> no. When you have a oh. <laughs> when you have a throwaway rocket, uh -huh. we we risk putting a, a liquid propellant booster on it, which gives you more. And you can't do that with the, the shuttle. Well, they canceled the Centaur when the Challenger blew up, so they went back to the IUS, which is a uses solid propellant, which doesn't give you as much of an oomph. So now the question is, well, how do you get? Is that, that a technical term, Randy? Yeah, that oh. really is. It's yes, it's it's oomph per meter squared, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> per second squared. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. The U right, so anyway, that's the, that's the Galileo spacecraft, and it also will get launched on the, the inertial upper stage. When's that scheduled? From the Atlantis or the Discovery? I think it's Atlantis. I think Atlantis will be just down. When it comes back, they'll put it up. Discovery with like a Department of Defense mission. A secret one. Shh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Can't talk about it. And then uh, they'll uh, do Galileo back on the Atlantis. <coughs> so two, two, two more flights? Yeah, I think it's the second one. Okay. So but um, Magellan is the one that they just launched last Thursday. A week late, almost a week late, six days late. Well, it depends on how you look at it. The window or the launch period. Yes, please call us at 967-7353. That's 967-SELF. With questions about the space program. Right, the launch period goes from, went from April 28th to May 28th. And right in the middle is probably when you get the most efficient use of your booster. It's like, you know, right when you barely can go, that's when the, the period opens. And when you, the last possible time you could launch it is when it closes. And the window on every day that was getting longer and longer really just had to do with a safety requirement that the shuttle land in mm -hmm. a place where it's daylight if there's an abort situation going on. So, matter of fact, Galileo will have the opposite problem because that'll be in October in the fall and the days are getting shorter. shorter. But uh, mm -hmm. Magellan's the one that's going now and it feels good to be sending a, a new spacecraft up to be yeah. listening to a new guy, which is really, really wonderful. Now, the, the difference in technology that's on the Magellan as opposed to the Neptune is got to be... Instead of in compared to Voyager? Voyager, Voyager I'm sorry. When was this the design? No. When was Magellan designed? Oh, <coughs> boy, that went all through the, through the 80s. But the thing is, it really is only using one instrument, which is just a radar. radar and yeah. it's doing four different types of, of science observations with it. But uh, the thing that's kind of interesting about Magellan is in order to save cost... Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. is a big factor. It, well, they're still expensive. Unleaded. The thing was still like 500 million. Yeah. Well, I mean, you should look at it. It's an 89 how many model. Years, you know, exactly. <laughs> right. 89. Power windows, no yeah. lighters. No <laughs> rebates. <laughs> yeah. Zero percent financing. Zero percent financing. Zero percent. Yeah. If you pay it off in two years, yeah. that's all. <laughs> well, sell any spacecraft, any color. No, anyway. <laughs> um, they inherit parts of spacecraft and they just pass them on to the next spacecraft to use. Hand-me-downs. Hand-me-downs. Okay. Like the whole high-gain antenna, the dish that you'll see later on is Voyagers and so is the spacecraft bus. They just stuffed a radar in between the bus of the spacecraft and the antenna. Basically, they figured that only a third of Magellan are new parts. A third? <laughs> Two-thirds of that are just taken from other spacecraft shuttles. That never went up, you mean? Well, when you, when you build something, you usually build engineering exactly. spares, you mm -hmm. know, a flight redundancy. In case you damage something, you've got something that you can just change out real up. quick. Plug it in. Modular quasar. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. modular. <laughs> Quality goes in. But it's uh, the name is on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good spacecraft. Well, we hope so. It looked nice. We saw the full-size model today. Did you know you saw Galileo today? That's Galileo, yeah. Magellan's the baby. Now, how big, is, how big is the Magellan? Well, it's got a Voyager high-gain antenna, so it's still 12 feet across and, and the same kind of bus. You just have about, oh, I don't know, 8 feet or so. 6 to 8 feet stuffed in between the two where you have this radar component because it uh, sends a real strong signal and it's got tape recorders on there to, to store a lot of data. Magellan's just going to... It has tape recorders. Data tape. Well, Voyager has tape recorders. There it is. Oh yeah, that's that's our spacecraft getting deployed <laughs> out of the shuttle cargo bay. So the the white and the gold, that's the the stage that actually boosted it on its way. Does that uh, does that get dropped? Yeah, you want, once you finish a stage, you don't want to carry it around because that's extra that's weight. Yeah. So you, you really want to lose it. Well, it's moving at twenty four thousand miles an hour somewhere around there. Twenty four thousand miles an hour. Well, I don't use those units. <laughs> that's, that's what they said on the news. Uh, well, okay, then hey, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the news, news is always right. I mean. Plus or minus some. Well, how Sorry. would you put it? Well, you see, the Earth is going so around the sun ass, okay. at about 18 miles per second. 
And if you want to visit one of the inner planets, you want to take speed off it to drop it in. Well, there you go. Wow, you guys are doing this great. So you've got a... You are here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, what you do is you, you launch it behind you so that it falls in mm -hmm. and can get to Venus because you have to lose energy to, to fall in. That's why it's not trivial to hit the sun. You really have to take all the speed off it because you've got all the Earth orbital motion taking you around. Hmm. But so it's probably going... It's like throwing a ball from a car. Something like that. Well, yeah, if you're going 60 miles an hour and you just throw the ball up, it's still going 60 miles an hour. Yeah, that's why when you throw a ball, it doesn't hit you in the face or something. Well, yeah, I mean, you throw the ball and it goes, <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty, pretty dangerous. That's true. They'd probably ban balls from cars. But if you shine a flashlight forward from a car, it's speeding at 60 miles an hour. It still goes 186,262.84 miles every second. <laughs> exactly. Now that's hauling ass. <laughs> <out. laughs> and that's all That's grow. moving. That's moving. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's not fast enough for, for a lot of things. Well, that's true. Things. For a lot of things. If all people, you should know this. It's four and a third years to Proxima Centauri. Exactly. At the speed of light. Yeah. Einstein okay. figured out a lot of things, but. Not how to go faster. Um, okay. Now, now what? Now what is? <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. But we. Fuck we. Fuck we. Venus. Venus time. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, that'll that yeah. give us some calls. All too well. All too well. How about having what? Rob give out that phone number? Well, that, 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 there's an idea. Sure, give us a call here at Quintessential Covino, the number 967-7353. That's 967-7353. Call us right now. <laughs> check, check your focus there, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, check your back row. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke. Inside joke. <laughs> Tighter act, huh? We didn't do the comic. Well, we didn't do the comic strip, did we? Would you mind if we do the comic strip? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. Go ahead, it's your show. You want to do a comic strip real quick, guys? I have to queue it up. Give up that count. So get some calls. Yeah. Now, what's the what's the Magellan gonna do? Well, we could really go through this. Dude. <laughs> 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 right. Um, do you guys care that these slides are coming all out of order? <laughs> no. I mean, okay. Hey. I don't think anybody would call and complain about it. They were out of order. You got anybody from the Magellan spacecraft team out out here in Covina? They they might, but I doubt it. They might. Did you need those slides back? Ooh. <laughs> you guys have an opening here? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, right. Uh, question? What is, what is the Magellan going to do? It has a radar. And the thing about Venus is, though it's our twin, it's basically virtually the same size and density and all that other kind of good stuff, it's got an atmosphere that's 90 times as thick as ours. And... Uh, Humid. <laughs> <coughs> Even worse than Florida? <laughs> Worse. Oh, okay. It's got the 900 degree Fahrenheit surface temperature with sulfuric acid rain. So, like when the Russians tried to land their, their Veneras, the Venera like 13 on the surface, they were using like diamonds for the lenses to their cameras so that they could do something real quick before the whole thing would just die. I mean, you really have to make really hard. So, it's kamikaze. Well, yeah, and the thing, thing is. And just to get that last Yeah, things bit. just don't last long. So, yeah. in order to see the surface, you can't use visible light. What do you, what do you use to grind a diamond lens? Diamonds? Other diamonds? I don't know. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Titanium. <laughs> but with with a uh, radar, you can actually see through the clouds, and then you'll <coughs> collect the reflection as it comes back, and then you can reconstruct what the surface looks like. And there are a lot of things about the surface we don't <coughs> know. You forgot space weenie. With two eyes. <laughs> uh, if you look at the s some of the old data from like Pioneer and, and the Venner spacecraft, especially Venner 15 and 16, you see these circular objects. And we can't tell if it's an impact crater or whether it's a caldera, which a is a map to a volcano. Or like a raider football stadium, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the thing is, there's a big difference. If it's an impact crater, you know it was bombarded by external sources. If it's a volcano, you know there's maybe some sort of internal geology. And if it's a raider stadium, then you're, you're wild. <laughs> Turned into traffic. You know, it didn't problem. go well. The raiderettes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, we'd be melting. Causing their own heat there. Um, <laughs> right, so I mean, this thing is really going to basically just observe the whole system. But the whole planet, and return data from about 70 to 90 percent of the whole surface, and you can see things as small as football fields. You know, figure, figure how many football That's fields funny. you can put all over the, the, uh, the Earth. I mean, you're talking about tons of football fields. Yeah. Tons of them. So how much? Well, depends how much a football field weighs, I guess. If they well, would you see them? You don't care how much they weigh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so this is a pretty exciting uh, event. I mean, it's just in fact, because of uh, you haven't launched a planetary probe in, in how long? Well, the Voyager was 77, and Pioneer, which really wasn't ours, but it was still planetary, went to Venus, Pioneer 12, 
We launched that one at 78. Who was Pioneer? Pioneer 12 was really more of a, it's a planetary mission, but every that was run out of Ames. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, Ames, Ames gets in the picture with What's some planetary that? stuff. It's another NASA center. Oh. Up near San Francisco. Wasn't cheap. Wasn't oh. <coughs> But it was America. Right. Well, America. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For Americans. Uh, red, white, and blue. Yeah, I know, but it's, uh, so we're really glad to have a new spacecraft up there. I mean, we've got a lot of old ones. This know. is a big year. I mean, what, there's like... Uh, oh, you got Magellan now, uh, April 25th at 1.06 in the morning. That's Neptune closest approach with Voyager. And then you got the Galileo. Well, what was the date again? August 25th, August 1.06 25th. in the morning. Then in uh, October, you got the can Galileo. We, can we come and watch the big screen? Ooh, I'd have a tough time getting you guys, huh? <laughs> 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 Nothing personal, but it's like everybody in their mind. I'm, I'm kind of little. Maybe you can sneak me in. I'd be real quiet and wouldn't touch the launch button. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you just take the down link? I mean, yeah. on the NASA Select. Well, there? yeah, go to Steve. <laughs> That's what Steve does. He, yeah. We were actually listening on his, he's got a car phone hooked up to his home and every, I mean, like, through microwave antennas all over <laughs> Southern California. He's got, <laughs> and his satellite just at home, we were listening on his car phone, the countdown of the space shuttle. Well, we have a car? Can yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about. There's what? something you mentioned that you shouldn't have. That Steve's going to get mad about. What is your car phone? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, caller. Hi. Hi, who's this? Linda. For Linda. Where are you? You, you? I just got home. Oh. I went out to dinner. Oh. Where did you go? Uh, Benny Hahn is in industry. Wow. There's a big <laughs> one. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm <laughs> I, don't, I do the same thing at home. Yeah. You're, so like a peppa? You're like a Peppa? You're like a Peppa. Kitchen magician. <laughs> so, do uh, you have any a question for Randy? Well, yeah. I, you guys were just talking about uh, uh, the mileage, I guess it was. Was it 24,000 miles an hour or whatever it was? Yeah. Uh, he wouldn't put it that way. Well, I know he I know he didn't want to put it that way. Can uh, we get, we got, we lost volume. Can we get that back up? That was great. Uh, how long before it actually gets there? I'm sorry, I just got home, so I don't, I don't know. That's okay. We haven't even talked about it. I didn't tell anybody yet. yet. Oh, okay, great. How long before we're baiting, it gets there? We're baiting viewers to call. We're baiting them? Baiting them. Basically, it's taking the slow way. Uh-huh. Go that way. God, there you are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> look, I'm gonna look in that camera. You can change it all you want. I'm looking that way. <laughs> no, just watch the monitor. <laughs> yeah, that last one looks silly. Okay. Basically, it's taking the slow way. It's going to launch in April and get there August of 1990, so it's going to take 15 months. And, it, and it's taking the slow way because it gave it the fast way to Galileo. Galileo is going to launch in October and get to, to Venus in uh, February, so it's going to take four months rather than 15 months. Really? Well, yeah, and the reason why we're doing it is if we gave Galileo the long way to Venus, and then it's got to take the long way all the way out to Jupiter, you could retire on that thing. <coughs> mm, so uh, Magellan said, okay, we'll take the Type 4 trajectory, which is a the once around the sun and then to Venus. <laughs> so we're just really going to be cruising on in nice and casually. So is, 15 is months. Voyager ever going to come back? Uh, the Voyager spacecraft, we don't want it to come back. Only in Star Trek. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, when it left, Deger. There, there, was was Deger. Deger. there was some bad feelings when it left, so they just don't want it to come back. <laughs> it was just kind of a falling out, and they just said, just don't come don't back. Don't say falling out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fallout? There's no, no, no <laughs> G <-vi> zero G <laughs> environment. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There, there was a floating out. And <laughs> we don't want it to come back. We want to see uh, all what's out there. And if you have it come back, it means you've stopped progressing that body of knowledge of what you can learn further out. And you've got to now do a return trip and you see things twice. Now, where's your diminishing returns on that, though? When do you stop getting data? How I many can we, can you always get data from the Voyagers? The Voyager will have to start talking slower and slower as we get out. And we already are. But we think the thing will die before we lose track of it. Yeah, I was going to say, won't it get obsolete? I mean, some of the love instrumentation. Obsolete, gee. Um, are you familiar with computer lingo in terms of sizes of memories of computer? Okay, uh -huh. You know, you talk about like 256K of memory, okay. 256,000 uh -huh. locations. Voyager's main computer has 4K of memory. A little HP 41CV can blow circles around the silly thing. But it's reprogrammable, so we can teach it new oh, tricks. Oh, I see. I have another question. Like sure. Prom. Are you ready for this, guys? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Have you signed the QC T-shirt <laughs> yet? No, not yet. <laughs> Thank okay, you. be sure to get them to do that. You're gonna be here next week? Yes. Okay. I was just gone because of the holiday, my father-in-law's birthday. Happy, happy so Cinco de Mayo. Happy birthday and Cinco de Mayo. Okay, thank you. Well, you oh. guys have a nice evening. Well, thanks, thanks for next week. We already well, are. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Yeah, we need you to autograph a shirt for us. We have shirt. To so autograph a shirt? Yeah. yeah, the show shirt. The show shirt. And and Nancy has one in her. And Nancy has yeah the Mueller shirt. We didn't have a show shirt last time. Well, that's new. We've, yeah, we've grown the new too. season. Right. We started. We've wow. reprogrammed our 4K of memory. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a show. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, caller. Hello. Who's this? This is Roger. 
Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi. How are you tonight? Pretty good. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Wesson. Randy. Uh, Randy, <laughs> I'd like to know, um, we know so much about Venus. What's the purpose of sending something there? When you say we know so much about Venus... As far as, you know, telescopes and... Well, we know about the upper atmosphere. We know nothing about the surface. Well, very little. If you look at... Do you know it has one? Yes. Okay. <coughs> what more there. do you need to know? We know that, uh, and you'll see <laughs> some, some, of the, some of the images that I show later on, uh, the Venera spacecraft, 15 and 16, took the best radar information of the, the Venus surface. And they only covered 25% of the planet. And uh, we're going to do 10 times better of between 70 and 90% of, of the surface. So that after we do this, no other spacecraft is going to ever have to go back there to do a radar mapping. Say between of 70 and 90, what does that depend on? Well, if we're go doing this, you know, we're going to cover a, a swath yeah. of Venus, and then we next day we do another ink, and then we go around again. If we have a spacecraft problem, or when Venus goes behind the sun, there's just so much data we're going to be able to collect mm -hmm. before it goes under, it goes behind. Mm -hmm. So it's really a function of uh, if we have any problems and, and, and the geometry. And then what happens is if if we have extra fuel, and since we launched a little bit later into this period, rather than April 28th, we might have some extra fuel to actually go around again to do cover those areas that we missed. Now, what's going to happen to Magellan? Is it that's just is it just eventually going to fall into Venus? It's going to be in orbit, and one day it's just going to fall in. But it won't fall out. <laughs> no, there's <it, it laughs> no gravitation. Anything else, Roger? Well, how is it transmitted back? It's got radio frequencies. Um, I don't know if S and X band means anything. It's they're they're right around. I saw them one at the Anti Club in Hollywood. S and X band, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it's just radio waves, band. radio frequencies. Monique. But the thing that's so neat about the data that it's going to transmit back, you guys know your scientific units. You know how you have like Very kilo well. is a thousand and mega is a million and mm -hmm. giga, giga is a billion. Giga. Do you know what's after giga? Uh, you said this the last time you were here. And right. I can't remember it. <coughs> I'm sorry. It's terra. Terra. Terra is the biggest that I know of. It, it, it's a million. <coughs> it, it's 10 to the 12th. Magellan is going to transmit three terabits of information. That is more information than the whole planetary space program combined. Wow. And this thing, we're just going to get flooded with data from this thing. That's going to take so a that while. That's going to take a while to oh, take care of. Huh? Decades. I mean, with the IRAS mission, which was an infrared telescope that was put up in '83 that did this sky survey. They built a building on the Caltech campus called it IPAC, and they're still researching the data. And we're going to return a whole lot more data. So there's mm. going to be a lot of information there. Wow. That answer your question there, Roger? It sure does. Thanks a lot, Randy. Sure. Mr. Wesson. Right. Whoa. <laughs> I know. I love when they call me Doc. Oh, like, yeah. Dr. Wesson. Dr. <clears throat> Dr. Wesson. <clears throat> Turn your head and cough. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that killed a rat. <laughs> Not at all. OK. Hi, who's there? Hi, this is Lawrence. Hi, no Lawrence. way, oh Larry. Is that good or bad? No, How are you guys doing? Good. Larry is, is extra good. Extra good. Welcome back extra to the good. airwaves. Well, thank you. The wel welcome back to the Blue Glow. <laughs> thank you. Blue Glow. Uh, <laughs> well, before I ask my question, well, what was the cause of your hiatus? Oh, a number of reasons. Uh, one of them was uh, uh, laziness, uh, apathy. That's two. Uh, I held out for more money. Yeah. yeah. And so well, did Dave and I. Money. Um, we all we all wanted time, and uh, we, we didn't have it. much of it, and so we just we went on another hiatus. Well, we we like our hiatuses. Well, well next time you'll have to have a sabbatical. Huh? <laughs> well, that's what I'm on now. <laughs> I'm on I had one of those once when I was a kid. Heard <laughs> like really. No, I know. I had to get a shot. <laughs> well, all of Kavina is grateful to have you back. Thank thank you for for speaking for the city of Kavina, Lawrence Weiner. Well, thank you. Madman that you are. Now, questions about the Magellan. We, we, well, of course, uh, Randy. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm actually very ignorant in, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, my knowledge of space and space travel. And, but one of, the, one of the things that I was kind of wondering about was, since Venus is our sister planet, so close in size and, and relatively close, uh, as close to the sun as uh, the Earth is, you know, and generally speaking, <laughs> why... <laughs> Why does Venus have such a different atmosphere? That's one of the things we really want to find Good out. Good question. Can we hold this thought for one second? Uh, can we hold this hold this thought real quick? Stay I'm there. Right. We need to, we need to take a quick break. Don't hang up the phone, and we'll be back to answer this question right after this. Randy can formulate a message. I think the space program is wonderful. Um, 
I like all of it. We've come up to both open houses and to the Galileo exhibit. My kids love it. I don't know what else to tell you. Do you think that the benefits are worthwhile, that it pays off for, for the money invested and time? I think so. I think it's well spent money. I wish there was more to spend. <laughs> Your husband? You were the first in this family to uh, get into college. I'm so proud of you. That stuff nobody does. I'm McGruff the crime dog. Now, watch these kids. I'm bored. Why don't we get wasted? Why don't you get real? I've got a better idea. Why don't you get lost? See that? It's happening everywhere. So, if anyone ever wants to turn you on, just turn them off. It's a great way to help take a bite out of crime. Oh, beautiful boy, spacious eyes, for and the winds of gray, for purple mountains, majesty, above the pretty plains, America. America is burying itself in over half a million tons of trash every 24 hours. If you're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hello. Mom, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> uh, I love it when you use the ice cube. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Mr. Liar. I can hold it any longer. Uh, oh, God. We gave you a Let commercial go. break. Let <laughs> go. Let go. Commercial. Uh, okay. Okay. The answer is... Uh, that one. Sure right. <laughs> um, we don't know, but what we think is going on, we think you're seeing what's called a runaway greenhouse effect. <laughs> A uh, runaway uh, yeah, greenhouse yeah, yeah. effect, which is what happens is um, sunlight will go through the atmosphere, okay, and then when it hits the surface, it changes to heat, and then the heat can't get through the carbon dioxide, so it gets trapped in there like a blanket, which heats up, which makes more carbon dioxide and just gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So we think that it's this kind of phenomenon <coughs> is going on, but you really need to check what's going on. You need to see if there's any volcanic activity or any kind of geological things that might contribute for this extra gas that might be coming out into the, into the, the if, if atmosphere. That's, if that's the case, then uh, the planet is c continually heating up then. Well, no, I think right now it's, it's reached an equilibrium point of about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not going to get any hotter. Oh, yeah. oh, so as much heat is escaping as is, as right. is coming Right. It, it's, it's now balanced, but the question is, how did it get that way? Why did it really run out? Because <coughs> if you think of it, Venus' surface temperature is hotter than Mercury. So something really made it kind of go nuts. And you'd really like to be able to work it back to see whether it really was this green out, this kind of effect. Is there, is there any way Magellan would be able to find this out? Is there any way to analyze gases from Well, the not really, because you're really just using one <coughs> But if you see all these circular things and find that they're really caldera, which are mouths to volcanoes, you, you can then maybe find out whether these things are active or not by energy measurements. And then if it is, it means these things are, are outgassing. And if they outgas like they do on Earth, it's water vapor and carbon dioxide. Excuse me. Kind of like that. <laughs> which would just be adding to the stuff, which could be more of your source for like the high constituents in the atmosphere. But we don't know. We, we just don't know. But we will. Well, Larry. Hopefully. Right. So uh, wh what is this atmosphere made up of? What kind of It's gas? almost virtually all carbon dioxide and a lot of it. Oh, I see. Just tons of it. Where, where our carbon dioxide is kind of like locked up in rocks, that kind of stuff, it's all basically in baked out of the surface and it's in the atmosphere. Right. In Perrier. Perrier. Perrier, of course. You could have a Perrier business there that just wouldn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Randy. Where's your Where's your uh, buddy? Uh, I think you know who I'm talking about. Jr. Yeah. He's uh, still <laughs> working long hours. Really? He's, in fact, place? he's uh, <clears throat> he's been working. Um, that secret six government and project. Se six and seven day weeks. Uh, wow. Every other week. So wow. he's uh, at this point he's in the middle of working 13 days in a row. <coughs> <coughs> well, we got to get you guys back on here uh, pretty soon. <laughs> okay, well, okay. I don't know. Did, I, did, I didn't. I didn't feel any enthusiasm, but I appreciate that. From who? I'm just kidding you. Oh, I am too. Oh, you are. Okay. <laughs> That's oh, what Larry, I thought. A lack of enthusiasm. We love you. You must be in the front row. No. Oh. So anyway, Larry. Well, that, anything else? Uh, no. Nothing. Um, I'll let the next caller through. And you good luck, and one. stay on the air for a while. Thanks. <laughs> Till our next hiatus. <laughs> next week. <laughs> okay. Thanks, bye bye. Later, Larry. Oh, he wants some movie passes, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't give Roger any. No, we didn't. Or whoever else. There's a couple people we missed. We didn't give Carrie anything either, did we? Well, Carrie. Yeah, she's. 
I haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. So, anyways, now the Magellan. Right. <coughs> so it's going to fall into the Earth, into Venus, right? Right. Basically, when everything's anything's in orbit, right. it's locked in there, and all it can do now is lose <coughs> energy. Like sky. Is, now, is there a gravitational pull around Venus? Everything that has mass has, has a gravitational pull. Uh, what would you what would you consider that? I mean, is there any way to tell <coughs> if it's stronger? Or less than Earth's? It's a little bit less than the Earth. You can tell exactly what it is from how Depends the mass Depends on the mass, is. Dave. It's right. all mass. Yes. Correct the window. It has nothing to do with size. Oh, okay. It's only indirectly. How, yeah. do you, how can you tell the mass of Venus? Though? Well, what you do is you take a spacecraft and you orbit it, and you can see how the spacecraft moves and how the signal gets distorted as it goes around the planet. And how it gets distorted is directly related to its mass. Okay. And then you can do things like you got its mass, and then you look, <coughs> you look how big it is, and you just find a radius, and then you make a you know four thirds pi r cubed, and you get a volume, and then from that, from a volume and a mass, you get a density, and the density to tell you, give you an idea what it's made of, and you just keep working down the line, adding pieces. Sounds a little too mathematical for me. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, All right, uh, sorry about the formula. That's okay. That's okay. No, that's good. We love it when you do that. Like when I talk technical. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't know what that does to me. Next week, quantum it's chromodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> it stokes my wood. Ooh. <laughs> 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 uh, we might not be right. here next week after all. Uh, this could be our last show. Um, <coughs> right. Now there's a telescope that's going up still, right? Hubble Space yeah, Telescope. Yeah, Space Telescope. Yeah. What is that? That's like that's like that's, big time. That's a great piece of glass, that thing. Yeah. That's uh, been waiting for how long? <laughs> easily three years. Yeah. Like Challenger. Yeah. The thing that's <coughs> that's neat about it is first describe what it is. It's a telescope with about like a nine foot piece of glass. Thick? Diameter. Diameter. Oh. <coughs> and this thing is going to be put in a, in a telescope that's it's like a, a spacecraft in terms of a robot. You can just radio control it how to aim, and it'll be above the atmosphere, <coughs> so there's no distortion from the atmosphere. By doing that, you know the pictures I showed last time here of Jupiter? Mm -hmm. You can do Voyager quality photographs of Jupiter every day without going there. The, the two analogies that they gave to tell you how sensitive this thing is, um, if if you had a quarter, hey hold, on. Wait, hold, a hold, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Earthquake just now. No, no. It just shook our house. Really? Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> Scared the dog. Really? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It just shook me up. Who's this? This is Shelly. Hi, oh, Shelly. hi, Shelly. Hi, you guys. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. It just scared the dog. She came running over to me, and shook all the windows. How's uh, how? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. Anything. Anybody here? Yeah. yeah? You did? Oh. Well, see, the, the studio here is actually mounted on a big uh, cushion of air. So <laughs> Isolation platform. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll try and get some information for you. <laughs> now, now we need to have Kent Sogmich no, back on. No, 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 we need, Riley, hey, is he need Riley Geary. Is he here? Where's Kent? Riley Geary. Yeah. <laughs> well, how was, uh, how was uh, Ghostbusters, too? Uh, Tom and we just got back. Yeah. He was up there about for seven months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. She's a makeup artist. She does. That. You met I, her I, I talked Remember? to you during the Christmas you party? How? party. I was in red in she a red, in dress. red dress. Red dress. Right. Uh, Randy, oh, Randy, Randy, I think would remember. I'm really color coordinated here. Just, <laughs> yeah. I have garanimals on all my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Giraffes go with giraffe. <laughs> so how are you? I'm good. I was just um, curious. I remember in my basic geology class about was it isn't there a difference between our planet and the other planets with the um, plate tectonics. Ooh. Whoa, <laughs> holy moly. Well, you think of plate tectonics, ha. and plate tectonics is basically the, the movements of certain <laughs> crustal features. <laughs> yeah, you guys got it moving around. Lateral motion, yeah. <laughs> we see that the Earth has plate tectonics. We don't see any indication of it on Venus. However, Venus <coughs> did have some active geology because it's got some real Mondo volcanoes <coughs> on it. Venus, we can't. Technical, take. technical. Real okay. big. <laughs> we don't know. Um, found it. We uh, don't know about Venus, even though there's some indication that there might be volcanoes on there, and Mercury just is geologically Isn't it dead. Maxwell Montez? That's Venus. Yeah. Missed it by Okay. Maxima. Is it on uh, Aphrodite or Ishtar Plateau? I believe it's Lachish. I, I can't remember. I don't. It's been a long time. It's Ishtar. No more chromatine. But it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, she's, you, good, good going. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. So an intellect. We're not sure really what's going on there in terms of the active geology. All right. Well, that's all. 
I guess ours is pretty active right now. Oh, are you? I wish yeah, I felt even it. Even as we speak. It scared me. <laughs> well, yeah. Listen, I happened, love earthquakes, too. Like. Um, the dog was sleeping, and about, well, I would say, 60 seconds before this happened, she came to me running, yeah, scared. That's, that's that old thing. Yeah, that yeah. animals are supposed to know. It's and like the S, it's it's the S like, waves oh. or the P waves, you know, they're not sure. Ooh, yeah, boy, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which ones are which? I, you know, yeah, that, I can't go. I don't go any further than that. Well, watch the news and we'll see tonight. <laughs> What's that? We'll see tonight in the news if it was something. Or an aftershock. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. All right, well, you guys take Appreciate care. It. Okay, you too. Right. Thanks bye for bye. calling. Good to talk to you, Randy. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye. See ya. Well, so I we should get the slides going. I was going to yeah. finish the Hubble Space Telescope. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. But get, did the, the slides are, are waiting. The two really good analogies about the Hubble Space Telescope. <coughs> Ooh, wee. Wee. Shock. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That uh, was an earthquake. The, uh, the Hubble Space Fireworks. Telescope. <laughs> Can we get a we, technician we right here? Uh, in the studio. <laughs> They're making noise. It's like, finally did it. Uh, uh, fire. Get the fire yeah. extinguishers that, ready, that's guys. That's on set five. What else you okay, Cal? Five. No, we can't lose that. We're just going to have to unplug it. Oh, okay, we, so we lost so much light behind us. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody, but we had a, we had this a, is a small explosion on our <laughs> stage. We're, we're reacting in real time. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> really? really. <laughs> right, so the Hubble Space Telescope? Yeah. You really want that thing to be able to point really accurately? The way they describe how accurately the, the puppy can point, it's another technical term. Puppy. puppy. If I give you a quarter, and I take, and uh, I take a, a hike, go to San Francisco, <laughs> this thing has to be able to point within either edge of that quarter, 400 miles away. Do you figure how big a, an angle that would make? Wow. <laughs> either, so, either edge of that quarter, 400 miles away? That's the pointing requirement. And for the, the mirror, the piece of glass that's really flat, yeah, as you make the thing larger, basically just in terms of a, a thought experiment, as you make it bigger, the deviations, the hills on it, would also get bigger. <coughs> if you made this nine-foot piece of glass, 3,000 miles long, the biggest hill on it would be about three inches. I mean, that's flatter than Ohio. That's pretty flat. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's really flat. That's better than to a quarter wave. Huh? Right, anyway, those are my pet things about the Space Telescope, and I just think it's just a great experiment. So when's it going up? Um, it was December, and I think there may be talks <coughs> about slipping into January. I'm not sure. No. But it's real soon. As long as they get it up soon, yeah. Yes. So that's going to be, that's going to keep people busy for years. That'll be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, it's that's that's the first one in part of the, called the Great, uh, ob uh, great uh, Observatory Series. So you got a visible telescope. You then will be putting up a gamma ray observatory for looking at, at gamma rays. You then got a uh, AXAF, the Advanced X-ray Astrophysics Facility, for looking at X-ray sources. And the last <coughs> but not least is CERTIF for uh, Space Infrared Telescope Facility. Yeah, so you have these four telescopes in orbit. Just not since around. the geophysical year, huh? Not since that, yeah. <laughs> 57. Um, was around. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey. Neither was I. <laughs> 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 <Just> barely. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. We got some slides of, of the uh, the project here, and we we'd love to show them to you and have Randy do a voiceover. Yeah, we'll give you an experiment. That's the Magellan logo. See, look, that's Magellan's boat, and it's going to Venus, which is the thing with the circle with a cross. Oh. Okay. Okay. So that's that's our logo, and, and that's us. That's, and a, that's <laughs> us again. See. Oh, it's an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> we lost it right. there. Um, Did we lose another light? There we go. This is a picture of Venus, yeah. and you can see that it's got just an extensive cloud covering. So there's really very little that we, very little that we know of the surface. It was just really, well, ixnay. It's just clouded over, and you've got these really serious wind patterns. And Venus itself, its day is about the same length as it takes to go around the sun, because it's rotating very, very slowly. So it's like 243 days to go around <coughs> and 244 days to make one turn on its axis. So it, it, it's really, wow. really kind of strange. In fact, I think technically it's backwards. It's, it's retrograde motion. Mm. Huh. So you also need to figure out why it's slow. <coughs> I apologize for this. And on TV, it really doesn't look so hot. But you've got in it the middle Venus looks, looks better on and on the right Earth. And it shows you comparison of, of boy, Get out your VCR. Next slide. Yeah, for all you real, real, <laughs> real hardcore guys, you can see that, that they're basically very oh. much similar in terms of size, density, um, characteristics, everything Politics. is like pretty close. Mm -hmm. Politics, no. And magnetic fields also. Public opinion. It's not the same. Uh, but otherwise, they're really very, very close. And that's the only one of that I, that I've got, so I apologize for that one. Okay. Oh, but Pasa grade. For really hardcore guys. I've, I've never really heard good. Pasa grade before. 
Well, it moves in, 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 in the normal direction. In, in, that's the way we know it. Positive gray versus retrograde. <coughs> oh. There you go, right, whole, right hand rule of astronomy. Thumb points to the North Pole. The way your fingers go, that's how the planet turns. So that's the positive gray direction. Or if your finger is, is the sun, that's how they move around the, uh, the sun. Okay. Here's a comparison. So you got the Earth, and then right underneath it, Venus. And then the middle one on the top. Yeah, they are really close. That's Mars. So you can see Mars is really small. And, uh, oh, an inset. Hey. <laughs> With right. a border. <laughs> With a border. The three <laughs> middle guys look, let's see, the middle one, those are other moons in the solar system rather than telling you which planet. So you can get an idea for how big or how small things really are. And, boy, anything else I can tell you about those? Earthquake information? Or what? You can just see that the relative size, that, that Mars is starting to get more on, on the moon size rather than, than, than terrestrial hmm. planet size. Yeah. Mars is a small place. Next slide, right. please. Now this is this is altimetry information <coughs> of the Earth. Now there's no blue doesn't isn't water and green isn't land. It just kind of came out that way. It really has to do with elevation. But from this you can see a little bit about the geology, what's going on. You can see how everything might have been one continent and, and fit together. The you know the white areas are really high, the mountain ranges where things might have mashed into each other to uplift them, and you can see like lines going from <coughs> the west coast all the way down Mexico down in, into South America. This is a, a Mercator projection, so you have to be a little bit leery about the top and bottom, the mm -hmm. north and south, because it really expands. So when you when you see the Venus one, which is coming on next, <coughs> we've done the same kind of data. The thing on the top is Ishtar with with Mount Maxwell. It's really smaller than the white area that's in the middle of the screen. The middle thing is about just distorted. Yeah, it's just distorted by it. But the thing is, we see these really high regions, but we don't see any of these lines where plates might have crashed together. So that tells us that maybe there really is no plate tectonics going on there, but we just don't know. We really <coughs> to really get a good look at what's going on there, to really see what these features really are. And you'll see examples of that as you get on there. This is great. This is Venera 13. This is taken from the surface of Mars. So you're looking at something. 900 degrees Fahrenheit, sulfuric acid rain. This really surprised us because we didn't think you'd be able to see the horizon. We thought with 90... You said Mars. Excuse me, Venus. We didn't think you'd be able to see the horizon because you've got 90 uh, times as thick an atmosphere there, so we figured it'd be smogged over. And we didn't expect the rocks to be broken. We thought everything would be kind of worn away and really kind of uniform. So seeing this stuff really surprised us. And, it, and this, well, that's, that's, this is a great accomplishment to do this. That's usually what happens when you start getting... Well, yeah, I mean, data. we say we know what's going to go on, and then we get there and we get surprised. So, like, the only thing we can say about, questions about Neptune is that, yeah, yeah, is that we'll be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is from a Russian This is probe? the Venera 13. This and you can see a little rectangle thing in the middle of the <coughs> photograph. That's actually a color strip that it stuck out so that you can have a comparison of, of what color to make things. It's yellow. It's, hmm. yeah, yellow, very yellow. And it's a tough environment. There's the Magellan spacecraft. So you can see the actual <coughs> size, well, size. You've got the technicians, and they're wheeling it around. You've got the Voyager high-gain antenna, which is 12 feet across, which is that white <coughs> dish. You've got that cone that's on the right side of the screen, which is your altimeter. You've got a 10-sided bus that's really relatively low down, and that whole middle section is just the radar they squeezed in between the two. And then you've got the propulsion system underneath. So, okay, here you see it in, in the vertical processing facility. You've got the Magellan spacecraft on top, and then that white can with the, the gold stripes, that's what's called the IUS, the inertial upper stage, which is what is going to launch it on. Which launched gives it, it the oomph, I believe. The, the, the right, the, the oomphs per second squared, right, yeah. Right. That gave it the oomph on its way to Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter, God, that's Galileo. Doing all these missions Dave is really driving. All the time. It's going to Venus. <laughs> this is Magellan now in the cargo bay, so they just put the whole stack in there, and you've got this little harness that it fits into, which they call the tilt table, which is what moves it into position Brings to push it, it out. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you'll see that a little later on. Spring loaded thing? Or? Spring loaded. You don't want to do anything with explosives <laughs> anywhere near the cargo bay. <laughs> Anywhere near the shuttle. No, yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, a man crew is kind of touchy when you, when you work with them. Yeah, I don't blame I can them. imagine. So here you have a shuttle <coughs> launch. You've got you know, solid rocket boosters and external tank. This is an early mission. I didn't have a slide of uh, the actual launch, so I figured <laughs> they all look alike. Yeah, launches <laughs> so are all pretty that's similar. That's like, <laughs> so, so that'll fake it. But uh, the launch uh, went like five minutes to the end of the window, but it worked. It was, it was a beautiful launch, right on the money. And here you see the, car the shuttle bay with the cargo bay doors open, and you've got Magellan with, it hasn't deployed its solar rays yet, they haven't come out yet, but you've got the, the upper stage that pushed it on its way to, to Venus. Basically, it just was spring-loaded and pushed out, and it was on a timer that, you know, one hour, ignite. 
So the shuttle would back away from it and then turn belly side up so that the windows weren't exposed to the exhaust plumes because the exhaust plume has a tendency to eat away the, the molding around your windows. And the last thing you want to do is lose your windows at 150 miles up above the Earth. Like a 747 or something. Okay, when it gets there, it's, it's going to do this elliptical orbit. So when it's real close, it's going to do this mapping sequence and see through the clouds. And that's what that like peeled section looks like, sending the radar. And then when it gets farther away, it's just going to radio all the data back to the Earth. And, and as it goes I said, in for another swoop. And then it goes another swoop, and it's just going to keep doing that, like every three hours. And just just keeps going around. How long will it take before it totally does the whole surface? They've got it worked. So it's going to take one Venusian day or year, 244 days to do the whole mission. Mm -hmm. okay. And then they'll come back again because they can't get both the North and the South Pole. So, you know, they're going to take it from the North Pole because preliminary data says that the North Pole has more interesting features than the South Pole. So there you're going to stop. Oh, this is neat. You've got Venus, and then what we've drawn it, the yellow is the orbit of the Magellan spacecraft. The lavender is the Venera's 15 and 16, so you can see how far that one was. And the blue is the Pioneer, hmm. Pioneer 12. And what I've done is, so this is how you can see how close we're coming, especially during the mapping phase, we're real close. I've then got the data from those three spacecraft, so you taken from Earth to show you the kind of resolution that you were able to obtain from all three. So and that is. That is. Okay. The one on the left, that is a Mount Shasta taken from CSAT, and you can really see a lot of the features. The middle one is Venera, and it, you kind of lose something here, but it really looks more like a checkerboard, the Venera stuff in the middle. And the one on the right is Pioneer. Basically, you just see it. <laughs> uh, Forget two, about it. Two shades two of gray. Two pixels, you okay? I mean, <laughs> <coughs> now, the middle stuff was only taken on 25% of the planet, and we're going to do 70 90% of the stuff on the left. Cool. So we're really going to be able to resolve it. And if you now take this Mount Shasta uh, photograph, you can make three-dimensional images like this. So this is Mount Shasta with the kind of resolution we'll be able to do. So I assume you're going to have Venus the movie. We're going to have Venus the movie. And it's really funny because when you see Mars the movie, they really said, hey, guys, no more crashing into things. Because in LA the movie and Miranda the movie, the guys that generate the stuff, Kevin Hussey and company, were crashing into the surface. Yeah, they and they really just crash. <laughs> <laughs> So Come what I'd like to do it. now is, just to give you an idea of what data visualization can do, there's a four-minute little blurb of just Mars the movie. And when you're watching this, think that we're going to be able to take all the clouds off of Venus and do the same thing to Venus that, that you're going to see right now for Mars. Are we listening to the audio track, or are you VOing here? Um, I don't know what's on the audio track. You know, we just, oh, I don't know whether there's, there's music I think it was Hulk the point. Planets, Mars. That well, we'll just, just do it. Run it. And yeah, right. We'll pot it up. Pot it up? Yeah. We're going to plant it in soil? Yeah. The first promising sign is visible to the naked eye as a bright star in the night sky. Through a telescope, it appears as a yellowish-brown disk with indications of complex features. However, using images taken by cameras on the Viking orbiter spacecraft, a simulated flight over Mars reveals much more detail. These are shaded relief maps of the topography of the Earth and Mars rendered onto spheres. The diameter of Mars is 4,202 miles, or about 53% of Earth's. The planet's volume is about 15% of Earth's. A comparison of the relative size of each planet to the size of its surface features demonstrates the enormity of the Martian terrain. The Mars elevations were derived from stereographic analysis of the Viking orbiter imagery. For scale, the outline of the continental United States is superimposed on a portion of the Martian terrain over which our flight will occur. Among the most impressive features on Mars are the Tharsis Montes, shield volcanoes more than two times the height of Mount Everest, and the Valles Marineris, a system of enormous canyons over 3,000 miles long. This Viking orbiter image mosaic was used for the flight simulation. The line being drawn follows the flight path. Flight elevations vary from 500 miles to 3 miles above the surface. The relief has been exaggerated five times and the natural color enhanced to allow better interpretation of small surface features. For centuries, Mars has captivated observers on Earth. Unmanned spacecraft and scientific data visualization have increased our interest in and knowledge of 
the Red Planet. And we're back. Interesting. Yeah, no, so, so we're going to be able to do that with Venus. All of Venus, yeah. So you can, geologists will be able to say, okay, let's go check out this volcano or let's go look at this canyon and really see what kind of geology is going on. Either really plate tectonics and sign of that, upheavals and, and that kind of stuff. Wow. So we're really excited. Thanks, Shelley, for bringing up plate tectonics. It's come into play several times this evening. Well, before we wrap up, I want to address a concern here. Um, we have a disgruntled viewer. I know, and I knew this was going to happen. And, and it was funny, when we were shooting the, the poster contest, everybody kept saying, when's it going to be on, when's it going to be on? And I thought, well, I know we're going to do a news story, and if we get enough footage, we'll do a, do a, a dedicated half-hour program about that poster, anti-drug poster contest. Right. And we didn't get, didn't get a chance to put any of the kids in the, in, the, in, the, uh, um, in the story. We had the talking heads from the, the you know, head of the community resources and the mayor and that kind of stuff. And we didn't get any kids. Um, but we are going to be putting together a, a program with just about the whole thing. We're putting the whole thing on and all the kids getting their awards and everything like that. So uh, I know there's some <coughs> people that probably are not going to watch QC very much anymore um, because they probably think we're a bunch of jerks. Um, but it was nothing, had nothing to do with QC, actually. Nothing new. <laughs> we are jerks. But um, we will be putting together a program on that. And I'll a be getting back to this. program dedicated to them. We're sorry about that. But We've been so hard. busy this week getting all the news stories together and everything. We didn't get a chance to... QC everything. It's around. really hard to get everything you want in there. We, yeah. we, we didn't put one story on tonight because it was too long. And, uh, so. But we will be putting together an entire program just about the, uh, the award ceremony. And uh, uh, Ms., uh, the, to the Morales family, we do apologize, but uh, we'll get you a free copy of the tape too. Now everybody's going to call a free copy of the tape. I bet you're responsible for making that. Okay. That's, in the, that's in the rules. It's in the I know. contract. It Thanks. is. It's in the new rules that Steve wrote. Well, we're, we're just about out of here. Randy? Yes. It was great to have you back on again. No, I enjoy you guys. You're a lot of fun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Randy, Co Covina area. Yeah. Okay. After, Hi, Covina. after uh, like September or something, we'll have to find a time to get you back. Oh, you mean like after Neptune? Yeah. Oh, that'll be wild stuff. That really will be. Neptune is already cooperating, so we know it's going to be really exciting. So you, are, you get, are you taking any decent shots right now? Or? Oh, yeah. We found a big blue spot <coughs> analogous to like the great red spot on Jupiter and belts mm. and zones and some plumes. And though they're not as sharp as what you'd see on Jupiter, we're anticipating that it's going to be more exciting than, than what Saturn looked like. It's clouds. Cool. So that would be great. You know, and Triton should be real wild. And 3,000 miles right over the top, <coughs> that should be fun. That's way close. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's almost scary. Well, yeah. It's <laughs> We got you, know, you know, you got to avoid the atmosphere. You got to avoid the rings. You got to make sure you don't get toasted in the magnetic field if it's got one. Jeez. But uh, <laughs> that's worse than Vegas. Scary. I guess it's, <laughs> it's up and, and then down. I think we're being bent like 50 degrees over the top. Wow. Well, Randy. Yeah. Good luck. 
Thank you. And thank you. Good to You'll see be you. seeing us all in the, yeah, in the paper all this, paper, all this summer. June 5th as we start, and August 25th at 106. All right. On top of that thing. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Okay, well, well, as we go out to, to the music segment, we're going to show the cartoon here, and uh, that's going to lead us into Jeff's Note with Jeffrey Plummer, and be sure and watch this exclusive interview with House of Freaks. Well, what's that? It's not real exclusive. I mean, it's the only, it's the exclusive interview. You're not going to see it's that. It's the interview. only one we're showing, yeah. No, but they're it was not going to see we that did it. anywhere else. But they did, I don't know, they must have done 10 that day with other people. No, but, ex the, but that interview is exclusive. That's the idea of exclusivity, Marty. Well, usually when you say exclusive, it's like you're the only one. And now, the continuing saga of Mary Worth. What I'm going to say might might be out of line, Doug. But I've been around here a few years. I know, Danny. You should have had my job. <laughs> no way. I should have had your golf cart. I deserve that one much more than you. And don't tell me different. Look, I know you're upset, but it's my cart. I've had it with that smug attitude of yours. First you get the best chaise lounge, now this. Listen close. I'm going to have that cart one way or another. Tune in next week for the exciting conclusion of Mary Word. <laughs> and we're back, and now it's time for that exciting guy, Jeffrey Plummer with Jeff's Note. Exciting guy. Well, thanks for the That's great right. intro, Rob. Uh, thank uh, <laughs> Speechless here. My fr my partner Wayne is on assignment somewhere in really? uh, Northern California. Yeah, we sent him up there to find some interesting bands, you know, on the road. All right, so he's so on the road again. But he is uh, on videotape here. We're gonna get to him oh. a little later on. But first, we're gonna we're gonna run a, a interview that uh, Marty gets set up for us with Rhino Records, and it's with House of Freaks, who are a two-member band, and they're a lot different than their name. Uh, makes them sound, you know, you, you picture House of Freaks as some old, wild band. Some old horror movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the House of Freaks. But it's really two nice guys from Richmond, Virginia who play uh, oh. pretty good music. And we have some albums that they right. autograph for us personally. <laughs> That's good stuff there. And uh, we'll be asking some questions after the interview, uh, some trivia questions, and we'll take some callers and see if anybody can win some albums. But first, let's take a look at the interview. And we'll be right back. Rhino Records is home to a lot of off-the-beaten-track kind of bands, and House of Freaks fits that description to a T. This two-man band recently released Tantilla, their second album. It's a folk lay sound that defies the fact that only a guitar and percussion are behind the steering vocals. We met with Johnny Hott and Brian Harvey at Rhino's offices to talk about their album and road experiences. Okay, we're here with Johnny Hot and Brian Harvey, the entire makeup of the House House of Freaks. Welcome. Thanks for coming. You can. We didn't know. You can. This is not a record company. <laughs> um, that was m my first question. I wanted to start it off. Uh, this is your second second release. Were you worried about a sophomore jinx type of effect happening? Um, were you worried that you might not be received as well as you were on your first album? No. No, because we weren't really received that well on the first <laughs> album. You know, certain elements, critically, we were received well, but in terms of public um, awareness of the band, you know, not too many people knew about us. So, you know, it's a combination of a, a lot of different things. On, you know, be, certain critics will will love your first album because there's nothing to compare it to. You know, this one now they're comparing it to what we did on the last one. So we, yeah, but we don't really care. How does this album differ from your first album? Different songs. <laughs> Twelve different songs. Did you, add in, did you add any instruments? Any? Did you fill? Last time it was pretty much a live recording, wasn't it? It's not as live as everyone, everyone here at Rhino made you, people <laughs> like you believe. But uh, they said it was just two people on there. But yeah, okay, two guys playing all the instruments. But Johnny played percussion. And I played acoustic. We mm -hmm. played some piano. There was a little bass on that first record. It was just produced slightly different. 
you know, we added organ this time. Johnny played marimba, I played banjo, played a little mandolin. Chrome horn. Bazooka. <laughs> what else did you put on there? Put the, uh, oh, the dreaded sack butt. We had that on there. Uh, the reback <laughs> I played. That's right, and the, um, what, the pillow. We had a pillow on it. But it was basically just the two of you still. But Sitting still. On, on the pillow. <laughs> Where where'd you get the name uh, Tantilla? Where does that come from? It's uh, it was a club in Richmond, an old dance hall, that was demolished in 1969. Richmond, Virginia, being our home, um, and uh, we liked we liked the sound of the word. How were you received when you returned back to Richmond after your first album and uh, the supporting tour? Not like celebrities. <laughs> No, one of the reasons that we like it there, being back there, is because it's not really, really that type of thing, you know. I mean, people know who we are. They knew who we were before we left. And, you know, some people that hadn't heard of us probably think, you know, other things mm -hmm. like the celebrity deal. But, no, it's just our home. We're just normal guys. Some people hate us. Some people like us. Is it a small town atmosphere? Right yeah, pretty much. much. Sort of. It's not a small town. Right. But uh, and you can bump into people you know on the street. That's yeah. Oh yeah. But we also refuse to be treated like celebrities there. I mean, yeah. we don't play the rock venues there, the big rock clubs. We refuse to do that. We play a club about the size of this room uh, and pass the hat, and you can maybe get 50 people in there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't even do House of Freak shows there. We play with Johnny's dad's country band there because <laughs> it's the one place in the whole country where we can be treated as something other than House of Freaks because we're playing for friends. I mean, we can play for strangers every night of the year away mm -hmm. from home but at home we can play for and with friends and that's what we would prefer to do in Richmond. Well leading into your uh, new video Sun Gone Down I was going to ask uh, where was that shot and where did the idea come from? Uh, the musical idea started off as Johnny's um, and then we kind of we wrote that wrote the, the rest of the song together kind of came up pretty quickly as one of those three minute songs that we wrote in three I minutes. I think it's three minutes exactly. You know, take, you take three goal. minutes. <laughs> yeah, what you want to do is write a song and arrange it in the same amount of time that it takes to play it. You know, three minutes is our goal. If you spend any more time and it's too <laughs> ponderous and it's not suitable for rock and roll, you should probably be writing symphonies or not playing rock and roll. Um, and then the lyrics uh, is, is, well, I'm okay with the lyrics now. <laughs> Figure it out. By the album. Find yeah, out. The video uh, was shot in Richmond, our hometown, places we love. Okay. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, yeah, thank thanks you for coming. Thanks for coming. You guys okay. came. Hold on. Yeah. I got to remember that. <laughs> thanks a lot. Are we gone now?